everybody. Um, I thought it'd be kind of neat to do a practice problem uh, using Kirchhoff's current law. And I know when some people hear the definition for the law, they get confused, especially if they hear it said in two different ways. There's two. Two different ways. Uh, you'll often hear it being said this way. The sum of all currents entering a node is zero. So if you add up all the currents going into, here's our practice circuit, into that node, if you add up all the currents going into it, it'll equal zero. But then you'll also hear the sum of all currents entering a node equals sum of all currents leaving a node. Wait, that's kind of strange because shouldn't the sum of all currents entering a node be equal to zero, as that guy said up top there? Um, yeah, so let's define or discuss what that means. When people say the sum of all currents entering a node is zero, what they're meaning, what they're saying is that when you look at all the currents through this node, the current going into there, the current going into there, and the current going into there, if you add it all up, should equal zero, which means that some of these currents, or at least one, is actually going out of it. So when you actually do sum them all up, you'll have a positive current in some place, a positive current in some place, and then a negative current, or a minus, uh, you'll be minusing a current because it's actually leaving it. And that's why they, but that's what they're really referring to by the sum of all currents entering a node is zero. It's because, yeah, you can call that entering the node right there, but then that means this is a minus two amps, right? Because we're actually saying the current's flowing this way. So to add up the current entering that node is really adding minus two amps. Weird. Uh, so just think of this. This will be way easier. The sum of all currents entering a node equals the sum of all currents leaving a node. So in this case, we have uh, five amps going into the node there. We have two amps leaving that node here. And the problem we want to solve is what is that guy? What is I3? What's the current through that resistor? The first question you might think about is, well, how do we know which direction we're going to say the current flows? Because it could be going into the node or it could be going out of the node. We just, we just don't know yet. What you do is you arbitrarily just pick a direction. So let's say it's going to, we're going to say going this way is our, is our positive current. And then you set up your equation. So if you're going to say going this way is a positive current for that guy, then all the currents going into the node would be 5 amps plus I3, right? That's all the currents going into the node. And the current coming out is 2A. So that has to equal 2 amps. And I really shouldn't have put the amps in there. Confusing stuff. OK, so just to make it cleaner, 5 amps going into it plus the I3 current going into it equals the 2 amps coming out of it. Now, if we're wrong and the current is really going out of the node, then this I3 will turn out to be negative. OK? So let's solve for I3. I3 equals 2, hey, what do you know? Minus 3 amps. So what that means is that because we labeled it going this way and the current is actually flowing out of the node, then we kind of mislabeled this. The current's actually flowing that direction, right? And then our I3, if we had labeled that way, our I3 would be a positive 3 amps. Okay. Hopefully that helps a little bit with uh, understanding Kirchhoff's current law. And, uh